Potatoes are the world's most widely grown tuber crop and an important food in our diet, be it for home cooking, ready-to-eat meals or snacks. They're a plant-based food that isn't going away. But how do potato varieties differ in their nutritional value? And how does agricultural practice influence the quality of potatoes? Who can tell us exactly what's inside the potato we are eating? Oh yes, I'd like to know where I stand. It's important to know exactly what you're eating. I suppose the more you know about your food, the better. It's cooking that makes the potato edible, but its food value depends greatly on what was in the raw potato to begin with. So, to determine exactly what we are eating, we first need information about the chemical composition of the raw potato. After all, what ends up on our dinner plate is what ends up in our body. My feeling is that I don't really know much about the composition of potatoes and the nutritional value of any of the potatoes I eat. If scientists could provide some more information that ended up on the labels in a form that I could understand, that might give me some more information to make the choices between potatoes I decide to have in my meals to put on my plate. With many different locations where potatoes are grown today, many different methods of agriculture and many different varieties, it's a big challenge to find out what is inside the potatoes we eat and, ultimately, to decide whether some potatoes might in fact be healthier and more nutritious than others. So I think in terms of nutrition and health, we've had some very exciting developments over the last hundred years or so. So if you think about the start of the 20th century, we discovered vitamins. Once we discovered vitamins, we identified their function and what happens when you don't have them. So deficiency diseases like scurvy related to lack of vitamin C. But what we recognise is that we all have a very limited understanding of all the type of actions that plant components might have on health. And what we're desperately looking for is new techniques that will help us to elucidate some of the relationships between what we eat in our diet and human health and disease. Scientists have already been analysing food for many decades. But for years, they had to rely on techniques that only allowed them to look at a few compounds at a time. And as these techniques were also very time-consuming, scientists could only gain a small glimpse of what is in our food. So, it would take two days just to establish the overall fat content of a food sample. But this would still not allow scientists to understand what was actually in the fat. Today, scientists are using a new technology to help reduce the degree of uncertainty about our food supplies, metabolic profiling. Complex mixtures of chemical compounds are analysed in a fully automated gas chromatograph within an hour. Passing through the 50 metre long capillary tube inside this high-tech machine, the chemical mixtures are split into single compounds. As these compounds leave the capillary tube, they are detected and displayed on a chromatogram. Each peak on this graph represents a different compound. With this information, scientists can identify hundreds of chemical compounds in the food they're studying, such as proteins, minerals or vitamins. We've collected hundreds, if not thousands, of potato samples from various countries, not only in Europe, and we've carried out a lot of metabolic profiling analysis on these potatoes. An example we've been working on is to use metabolic profiling using hundreds of compounds in the analysis to see if we can differentiate between conventionally grown potato crops and organically grown potato crops. And it's pretty obvious that you can separate the conventionally grown potato from the organically grown potato. Clearly, the conclusions we can draw will depend upon our interactions with nutritionists and clinicians. We are plant scientists, we're not human physiologists or, or medics. So it's important that we have a multidisciplinary approach in terms of interpreting the data, in terms of what it means to the consumer and the human being. Until such studies are concluded, our buying preferences will be determined largely by our personal tastes and experiences. 
I can remember that my grandfather used to grow potatoes and they tasted really good. The potatoes we used to get lately in the supermarket just don't taste as good. When you buy organic, they are, it's, it's just like eating your grandfather's potatoes again. They, they've got a much better taste to it. It's mostly gut feeling and it's like, I kind of feel like I'm following the crowd. Like everyone says organic's better for you, so you kind of take on what they're saying. It's the feel good factor as well, I suppose. It's, it's yeah, very important. Metabolic profiling creates a large amount of data that scientists still have to analyse and interpret in more depth. But it's already evident that as more profiling results become available, they will stimulate important discussions about the food we eat.